Hi, I'm Steve Van Meter, and welcome to your Monday Night Live that's being pre-recorded, where we take 15 minutes on Mondays and Wednesdays to try to make sense of what is going on in the markets. Today's topic is all about corporate share buyback blackouts. You'll notice I had to say this slowly because you can't say it fast. Anyways, we are getting into this period. This runs about a month long, and I've got some really cool details on buy sector, what's being blacked out, when it is, how long it runs, because this is about the worst time you could buy stocks ever. So if you're thinking about running out and buying a whole bunch of stocks, you do not want to buy during the blackout period because the biggest buyer bar of stocks right now is going out for a while. They'll be back. To what degree we don't know because we'll find uh, you know during earnings we're going to find out just how much money they have spent in this first quarter and it's substantial so before we get into that let's jump in and get these disclosures out of the way the content of this video is provided as educational information only is not intended to provide investment or other advice materials not to be construed as a recommendation or solicitation of buyer selling security finance product instrument or to participate in any particular trading strategy this video was prepared by Stephen van meter own personal capacity business expressed this video that anyone do not reflect the view of alice financial advisors inc or Stephen van meter financial so here's what we need to know when stocks got blacked out in october of last year they took a 20 percent hit when they blacked out in January, there was so much excitement that I don't even know how to say how much excitement there was, but there was some bunch of people that were buying ahead of it. And lo and behold, stocks went right back to where they have been since January 2018. So nothing major there. Here we've got another blackout coming and the liquidity conditions are as bad as they were in October. So I'm gonna quickly adjust my slide so we can take a look. But this is really interesting stuff. And I mean, these are really cool slides. So let's talk about earnings growth. We've looked at this. This is the most recent slide that I snagged from FactSet. And uh, this shows, and as of December 31st, what projected earnings were going to be in the first quarter. So you can see pretty much uh, utilities, healthcare, real estate, industrials, financials, communication services, the broad S&P, consumer staples, um, with the exception of materials and energy. So with the exception of technology and consumer discretionary, on a broad basis, in which you can look right here, earnings growth is going to be positive. As of today, utilities, not as positive. Healthcare, half as much. Real estate, not as positive. Industrials, less than half. Financials, negative. Communication services, negative. S&P, negative. Notably in the S&P is up, but the projected earnings are down. Consumer staples, negative. Consumer discretionary, negative. Technology, these are big buyers of stocks right now, negative. Materials, or also you'll find mining stocks in here, hint, 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 negative. Energy sector, big. I mean, look, energy sector was the big sector to invest in in December because it was supposed to have blowout earnings. Look at that, minus. Went from plus 16 to minus 15. You want to know why I have not jumped into uh, the oil and gas sector right here. There is some mispricing going on uh, currently that's going to be digested in the near future. So here is a really cool schedule that shows the, the buyback blackout timing. I've not had this before, but I've got it uh, now. So you see the biggest block of blackouts starts this week and runs through the end of March, which is circled here in red. So starting this week, so 314, we can go down here. That would have been uh, Thursday where we started to see some, some blackouts coming. But we've got this week all the way in through to part of next week. And you can see you've got autos, banks, all blacked out. Most capital goods companies, most communications companies, consumer durables will build their uh, con Consumer services will be mostly out. Dividend paying financials will be mostly out. Energy sectors will be mostly out. Food and beverages, mostly out. Uh, household, out. Insurance, out. Materials, mining stocks, out. Media, out. Pharma, out. Real estate, retailing, semiconductor, software, most of technology, telco, transport companies, and most utilities are blacked out. Now these blackouts do extend all the way till mid April. And you can see capital goods, communication services, and consumer durables, plus food and healthcare will be pushed there. But what we're really interested in is who is buying the most stock back? Software companies, they're gonna run all the way through mid April. Technology companies, they're gonna be running through early April. And semiconductor companies, through mid or early April. So these are the big boys that are buying their stock back. 
These are the ones to watch. And as I mentioned, materials, hint, 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 mining stocks, they're blacking out too. So we expect some downward move there. And then energy sector, that's going to be really full force by uh, next week. So there's some interesting stuff coming. Now, as we look from a bar chart, you can see the percentage of companies in blackout uh, peaks right around mid-April, and then it, it phases down. So we're kind of going to be watching right in here to see how far the market goes down because this is going to be very interesting. The liquidity conditions are terrible. And part of the thing that's going to happen is this week on, uh, let's see, March 20th. So that'd be on Wednesday as the Fed gets to announce their, their meeting minutes. Uh, they're going to drop uh, 8.7 million of highly toxic and volatile mortgage backed securities back onto the market. A week later, they're going to drop another 8.6 billion. And then in April, right in the middle of this heavy blackout period. So April 3rd, let's go back up and look. April 3rd will be right in here. So there'll be still quite a few technology companies blacked out. The Fed is going to drop $22 billion of um, U.S. Treasury bonds. Nasty, nasty stuff. And then they're going to go fairly quiet as the blackout period ends. And then May 1st, wallop. Wow, that's going to be a, a nasty day. So there's a lot of things that are going to drain liquidity. And then when you look at the CTA quant models, I know I told you this is going to be a cool update. We've got a lot of great information. Now, this is a number of days from now and the sell signals on the S&P 500 from the quant models. So if we go out 14 days from now, the these models will sell at 27.91. So we're at around 28.30. And as you can see, as the days pass from today, it isn't going to take much of a drop in stocks to get these things and go from 100% S&P to 80%, and then it'll tick down from there as the market goes. So these quant models are positioning to sell. And so we've got this really interesting period where stocks are going to black out, and there's not a lot of buyers. So we've got um, about eight minutes left. Let's switch over to the charts and uh, see if we can make sense of what what happened on the charts. And we can go back to October. Market was a high. And look, blackout, boom, 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 boom. Now we're markets at a high. From a volatility perspective, you look at volatility, whereas October was at a relative low point, and boom, volatility took off. Now look at volatility is virtually right where it was back in October, and guess what? It's setting up to make a move higher. The part that is not the same, and uh, let's zoom in a little bit on the one-year chart, looking at US 10-year uh, treasury bonds back in October, they were at a high, and it took some unwinding and the market going down to bring them down. And now they're sitting on this shelf, this really big shelf that could quickly cause 10 year treasury yields to drop down to 2.3%. They're on the cusp of breaking down during this illiquid point, which will just pull more liquidity out of the market. Looking at five year yields, you've got an even more dangerous situation where five year yield, we gotta zoom out on this one. Let's go back out. So five-year yields, if they break uh, this part here, realistically, the first destination is going to be somewhere around two. So they've got this big major move down to go. Um, and we can almost even say that they could get down as far as 1.8. So five-year yields are breaking out. How about 30-year bond yields? They're sitting below their 50-day moving average, this little green line that you can barely see. And they're at a cusp of breaking down to 2.7. So when you get these periods of illiquidity, you know, markets can move down very quickly when the largest buyer of stocks is unable to buy anymore. And they're going to be out for a while. Uh, and you just take a look at oil and gas producers. Again, I've said this is not a bullish pattern in stock prices right here. Yeah, it came down and there were some buyers there, but notice the volume isn't huge. You want to see big volume. Well, you can get big spikes like this that are way up here off the charts compared to what we saw here. We saw a lot of selling, but we haven't seen a lot of strong buying sense. And why is this? Because corporate executives in these oil companies, they know then they know those first quarter earnings numbers are what they're going to look like. They went from plus 15 or plus 16 to minus 15. Those numbers are going to come out. What do you think is going to happen to the sector? Stop the prices are going to likely fall. And so that's why you haven't seen this thing. It kind of took off here and just meanders because the big executives are still exiting positions because they're going to look to be buying at a lower point. 
How about mining stocks? I said they're not going to break out just yet. They're going to go black out too. That ought to put some downward weight on them as well. When we look at gold, where's gold at? Here we go. Gold futures. Look at this today. Gold came up, touched the top end of its resistance level, just under its 50-day moving average. Didn't get over either of them. This again is telling us that gold is heading to this 1240, 1250 level with the blackout period. That tells us that potentially gold and silver mining stocks are coming. Here's gold, that gold mining stocks are headed back down to this $20 range. You never know, possibly down to 19, but my guess is they're gonna stop right around here. And we're gonna know that because we now know exactly when their buyout period ends. It's all very clear now when you have the roadmap. Uh, let's see how we're doing on time. We got four more minutes left. Let's go look at crude oil that is likely to come back down as earnings show that corporations are not doing that well. Now, from face value, this is a pretty bullish view where you see the 50-day moving average crossing positively through the 100-day. But still, it still sets up this realistic move lower in crude oil as it becomes clear the economy is not all that strong. Let's take a look at the seven to 10 year treasury bonds. They're just nudging, trying to break out over this consolidation uh, uh, period here where prices have just been trading back and forth and they keep nudging themselves a little higher. It doesn't take much for this sector to break out and pull liquidity. When bond price, prices rise, as we're seeing here, you see liquidity get pulled out of the market. We got this very interesting setup coming. Look at the 30 year. They keep getting rejected here at resistance, but normally when you get rejected resistance enough times, you pull all the way down to support and it's pulled down support once, twice, but it's still nudging up here, just waiting to break out. And when it goes through here, it's got its next uh, resistance zone is right up here. So look for that move to happen as well. And last but not least, the little engine that could add commodities with the Midwest or growing region seeing now a, a bomb cyclone of a storm, which is bringing record flooding. I kid you not, record flooding. It seems kind of crazy, but you can go look it up. So massive winds, record flooding. And you have to understand these farmers, they have a very small window to plant. And overly wet conditions is not good. You, they'd rather have dry conditions than wet because you can always find a way to get water. I know they don't irrigate there like we do uh, here in California, but too wet is not good and, and uh, ground conditions are very, very wet. So we take a look here. We're seeing a little push in this sector. And this is nice from a volume standpoint. You're not seeing these big trading moves, but what you're seeing is prices rise as short sellers get squeezed out. And today, prices started up here, traded down, and the bulls pull it back. Now, we have not seen much of that price action. We generally have seen sellers selling, 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 and just pushing down right now. The sellers are what we say exhausted. They don't have the resources to keep shorting this, at least based on what we're seeing over the last, say, uh, five to seven trading days. So this is a bullish setup now, where if this thing can get some momentum and get some attention from other traders, it could keep pushing against these shorts. And then it would need to really get above its 200 day moving average, kind of break out over the $17 price range and get going. And there's a lot of upside, especially with the weather conditions that occur during solar minimums. You get colder, wet, uh, colder and wetter weather and you get bizarre weather patterns so it's all kind of just part of how things uh, work so i know we kind of raced through things but that's just because they didn't have as much to talk about today compared to wanting to get through those share share buyback blackout chart so this is a period where again you hold off look at where you want to be and then let things come down watch the earnings hear what buybacks are coming for later in the year if there's much but this should be a downward move in stock prices because the, the, the only reason they've gone up is simply because corporations have been just relentless, relentlessly buying and then the computer models bought. Well, now we know the corporations are gonna go quiet. The computer models are positioned to start selling. The bond market is about to break down and there's nobody there to prop it up. And I know everyone's hoping the Fed will do that but even at best, if the Fed totally stops their balance sheet unwind in October, I doubt it, but we'll see. 
The rumor is they're just going to scale it back. And the bigger rumor is going to be that they're going to lie about that and just say that they're thinking about it. They're, they don't, they're not going to want to be committal, but they're going to want to suggest enough to get people to believe that they're going to do something. And then they're going to hope not to because they need, again, they need to get interest rates up. They need to get their balance sheet down because if the economy recesses and it's going to, they don't have any tools. They can't stop what's coming. So with that, it's been 15 minutes. Thanks for watching. I'll see you Wednesday. Bye now.